Hello, welcome to River Reflections, brought to you by Grand Rapids River of Life Ministries, and that was the inside of our sanctuary you watched in the roll-in for this program. We love for you to listen to our teachings, our sharings. I'd love for you to write sometimes. Hopefully the website and the email will be on the screen before it's all over. And my husband and Robert and I are the pastors of the church, and we and the other pastors, leaders, members, wonderful people there would love to see you come and visit. And if you're looking for a church home, consider us. There's our uh, YouTube channel right there, and pretty soon you'll see our uh, website too with even more information of where we are and when we meet and all that sort of thing. Tonight, I was going to strictly stick to teaching on Philippians, but I'm going to start with something very current right now that is so heavy on my heart and has been for a long time. I did see a verse in Philippians that would undergird what I'm about to talk to you about for a while, and that's Philippians 1 verse 9. And it says, and I, This I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more, in knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that you might be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. I'm looking at this first, and when I preached on it in church, which I've been preaching on Philippians chapters 1 and 2, but when I preached on this particular verse in church, I talked about um, knowing people better, being able to judge better, how to act, how to be around each person, and walk in excellence and be without offense. And there's a lot we could say about that on one-on-one -on -one, uh, relationships of knowing each other and dealing. Uh, it even says about husbands, deal with your wives according to knowledge. Well, if you think about that, um, how your husband treats you if you're a woman is different than how mine would treat me because we're different people. We have different love languages. Um, in order for each husband, each wife to treat their spouse right, you deal according to knowledge and judgment concerning that person. One person will be thrilled with a gift. The other one uh, maybe just prays. The other one maybe if you clean out their dresser drawers for them. Um, you find out over time what blesses people. You deal with people according to knowledge. You get to know them. You judge correctly. And you approve that which is excellent. We do that in our interpersonal re relationships. But I want to segue into our societal relationships right now for a while. I hadn't talked about this yet on this program, and I'm going to do it now. There's there's been a couple of storms that right now have converged upon our nation. One, of course, is the pandemic, the COVID, and it's not just our nation. The storm is all over the world. So we can't just say there's some sort of a uh, insidious plot to bring down the United States. It's all over the world. So if somebody is behind this in any way, shape, or form, they manage to affect just about every country on the globe. Uh, every now and then I'll read about some country that's not affected quite as much. But little by little, it seems like everybody gets their share of this mess. Well, that's a storm because it's bad enough we're having to deal with a virus. But along with that virus, even before what I'm about to mention came to pass, came, it hasn't passed yet, came in place, uh, the COVID virus brought in a whole lot of division in our our country, not the virus itself, but our response to the virus. It literally began to be politicized to where some people saw, see, wearing a mask as like somehow you're associated with Democrats and having an attitude about it somehow that's the Republican side. And I don't even get the logic of that. I really don't. All I know is it's become really politicize this whole thing the whole idea of a vaccine there's a whole lot of people that think yeah you think you're slick you're going to stick something in there might alter our dna it might put some sort of a tracking chip like a gps it might do this 
the distrust. And then other people are like, well, yeah, we need a vaccine. We need to have it so strict that you can't travel unless you have one. You can't get in a store. You can't go to summer camp. You know, just this whole list of you better have a you better be a card carrying vaccine person or else. You know, that's not that far out. When I had a trip to Africa, Zimbabwe, um, the computer uh, computer site told me I need to go to the local health department get um, and get checked up, get certain shots, um, go to the doctor, get malaria pills. Boy, did they cost. And then carry this little yellow card, which, by the way, they never even asked to see, but I was told to carry this card to say I had done this, this, and this, and this before I attempted to enter Africa. Well, that was a new thing to me. I'd never had to have that on international trips before. But it could be so that one day um, we have to carry some sort of card to say we've done this and this and this according to a demand by the government. I don't know. All I know is out there in the electronic messaging social media space, there are all kinds of theories on be sure to take it, be sure not to take it. Then they said Dr. Fauci himself said if there's a vaccine, don't get too excited. It might have only a 50% chance of working. I'm like, okay. And just like the flu vaccine, you got to have it. You got If you work at a certain place, you got to have it. You got to have it. And the next thing you know, oh, that one didn't work for the flu, That the majority of the flu cases that came on this year. So every year it's a, a dice roll, every year. Is this the vaccine that's actually going to address the strain of flu that comes at us during this season? And the answer is, we're not sure, but maybe if it's not, at least you won't get it as bad. It is so, there's so much confusion even among the experts, I'm getting at something here. This verse about love and judgment and knowledge, when I had a conversation with somebody on Facebook and I was questioning some of the um, sheltering in, the severity of it, the mask, I question, and some of my friends who, it's amazing, it's the more liberal-leaning ones, so maybe there is a connection with party lines. It seems like their mind, even though to me it's not logical. Uh, said to me, oh, you're the expert now. You know what we should do. And my response is, look, I just read an article coming out of Holland, Amsterdam, where their top scientist expert said, we don't think it does any good to wear a mask or social distance. What, their experts are stupid? How do we know who has the correct information? What is my point? When we deal with each other after knowledge and we discern one another's character and the fruit of the Spirit, to take a stand of, oh, you can't possibly think our government is wrong, that is just, that's just mean because most of us read all sorts of reports about all sorts of things. So we come to the table, a lot of us with an attitude of, I really don't know. So if our government, said, our government says, our governor in this case, we have to wear a mask when we go in the grocery store, I'll comply. But whether or not that is the wisest rule in the world, I don't know because I hear this and I hear this. But what's the bottom line? The bottom line is I shouldn't read any articles where people are literally yelling at people at Walmart for not wearing a mask or grabbing it off people for wearing a mask because we're not a bunch of dumb sheep. We don't have to follow all this. There is such contention, and that's what I want to address. There shouldn't be such contention. You know, being a wife has helped me a lot about rules, and I've said it to my church many times. As a wife, I'm commanded in the word to obey my husband as unto the Lord. So when he comes, he seldom does, by the way. We're, we're partners. He sees us as level playing field equals. But we all know because he's the man, he does have bottom line privileges because that's what God gave him. Now, if you don't believe in the word, you think I'm nuts right now. But if you believe in the word, it's in there. So whether we all think that's fair or not, that's totally irrelevant. It's in there. 
and I will listen to it. But the thing I ask myself is, is what he just told me he wants me to do, is it illegal, immoral, or unscriptural? Because the Bible says to obey him as unto the Lord. And if none of those apply, I'll obey him, whether it would have been my choice or not. Okay, roll back over into the mask. If our governor is wrong about us wearing masks all the time in indoor spaces, I ask myself, because we do have to obey the authorities. That The Bible said all authorities are of God. We're supposed to obey them. And if there's nothing wrong with their command, immoral, illegal, unscriptural, the only problem is we just don't like it, then there's really no excuse for not obeying it, whether we like it or not. That's what you expect of your kids when you were raising them or you're still raising them. Sometimes they'll say, why? And you say, because I'm your mom. That's why. Well, because I'm your governor. That's why. That's, that's even if she's wrong. I'm saying we as Christians should never be those people that are having an all-out fight with somebody over, well, I'm not going to wear that. I'm not going to do that. Anybody that does is a dumb sheep. That should not even be on our radar to, radar to get into that kind of thing. Until you prove that. Now, some people are saying the mask itself. Somebody had one they wore all day long every day and for some reason didn't wash it enough. And then something built up and they must have got Legionnaire's disease, according to this article, directly resulting from they wore it all day every day and didn't wash it enough. Well, somebody needs to add that warning, folks. If you're going to make us do that, give us a little more insight on this. Nonetheless, my main issue right now is fighting over things that we really don't know for sure. There was a day that a bunch of the Michigan militia went to our state capitol during the sheltering in time, and they were protesting and people still are protesting the mask, thinking uh, Governor Whitmer, that's our Michigan government, has overstepped her authority, and some people are going to court to debate it. Well, meanwhile, it's in place, whether you like it or not, so you obey it. But they were protesting about sheltering in. You know what my attitude was? Hey, I don't know about this disease. I don't know if it's going to help to shelter in. She's telling me shelter in. She's the governor. Again, is it unscriptural? Is it illegal? Is it immoral? Now, the people that were debating it's illegal, they went to court to see about it. Apparently, they didn't win because that's not the reason it got lifted. And they said she didn't have the right to keep extending the emergency status of Michigan. Well, she just did it again. It's August 10 today, and she extended it some more. I forgot the exact date, but it's a good little chunk of time, a couple, two, three weeks more, whatever it was. And people are saying, you don't have that right. Well, meanwhile, you didn't go to court and get that overturned. Here we are. Christians, the Bible says, obey them that are in authority over you because they have that authority. Now, when is it right to disobey our authorities? Well, it goes right back to the disciples in the New Covenant writings. They were told by the authorities, their authority, their religious authorities, actually, but the Romans were working with them because they got thrown in jail for preaching on the street. They got whooped, they got confined, they got shackled, and they were told, don't you teach in the name of Jesus anymore. You be quiet. And as soon as they got out of jail, they went right back in the corner, and when they were confronted by somebody, they said, what, what, are we supposed to obey you or God? God told us to go preach the gospel. We're preaching the gospel. You will not shut our mouths concerning that. And some things then get to be gray areas with this whole thing. For instance, having church in person. We've been listening to a, a blessed man of God on the TV. His name is Lauren Sanford. He's the son of John and Paula Sanford that a lot of us old timers listened to in the 70s, inner healing experts, did a lot of ministry to people. This is their son. He never, he lives in Denver, California. He never shut down his church at all, period, even during the sheltering in. You have that case in Florida with Rodney Howard Brown that refused to shut it down. Then they came and put him in jail. You got a man named 
John MacArthur right now in California that has a huge church and he's saying, I'm not going to shut it down. I'm not going to have just a handful of people. I refuse to obey. And they're, I don't know if they've already fined them a grand a day, I think. Look it up for yourself. But they're fining him and they were threatening jail time. That gets real uh, touchy because the Lord said, don't, don't forsake the fellowshipping together. And the law is saying it's dangerous health-wise. And then we're left with some great masks. Yeah, I don't like it, but I'll do it. Um, standing six feet apart, yeah, I'm a touchy-feely person, but if I, I work hard at it, I'll do it in Meyer or Walmart or whatever. Even if I see somebody I haven't seen for a while, I kind of feel them out where they're coming from with distance or whatever. And there's some things that, but to tell me Christians can't meet and pray together. And during that time, I heard Christians say, well, this is the time we'll find out church is in a building. Okay, fine. And we had online church for, what, a month, six weeks? I forgot how long, maybe six weeks. And, and we had some great messages we shared with one another and prayers we shared with one another. But there is nothing like coming together in person, three-dimensional, body language, tone, sharing, caring, sitting together, care. There's, there's something different. There's an added dimension when that happens that we need as Christians. And no, the build, it doesn't have to be a church building. We could meet in somebody's, some churches have taken over bars and gas stations or meet in a park pavilion. It, it, the place doesn't matter as much as the fact that we can gather together in the name of Jesus. I just saw on uh, YouTube today where a whole bunch of Christians got together in a Walmart, and it reminded me of those flash mobs that sing choir songs or whatever, because they got in Walmart and they had church. And their theory was, well, you let people come to Walmart, more people in this place than there is in our church, so we'll take church to Walmart, and what you going to say? Because you made it okay to be at Walmart. The other thing, and see, this is the kind of thing that we can become angry and resentful about. And Christians, we have to be careful. We have to be pe people of love because it said that's how we glorify God. When we're filled, it says here in 111 of Philippians, when we're filled with the fruits of righteousness, which come through the Spirit of Christ in us, it praises and glorifies God. So when we even talk about some of these things, we have to do it in such a way that obeys his rules like submitting to the powers that be and not get angry. What really can be um, frustrating, she made the rule of sheltering in and then a whole lot of people started race rioting because of the incident in Florida, Florida, it wasn't Florida, Minnesota, of that um, Mr. Floyd getting killed. And all of a sudden, what was going to be a June 22 deadline for sheltering in got lifted a full week or more before the deadline because people were out rioting. When they started uh, first demonstrating, then rioting, okay? I know there's peaceful protesters, but somehow they keep morphing into riots, okay? And I'm sitting here thinking, oh, the governor's got a perfect excuse to break up the protesters. You're supposed to be sh sheltering in. Oh, no, she lifted it. Now, go figure. Why is it okay for that? And you could get really exasperated. But as Christians, we can say something. We can say to people, you might want to vote in another governor next, next time. We can say all that. But to not pray for her, to not love her, you may not do that. You are not allowed that. You have to pray for her. Those of you that aren't thrilled about President Trump, you're commanded to pray for those in authority. You're commanded to love everybody. And as you do, you do it to glorify God. Jesus said, love your enemies. Do good unto them. It doesn't mean you agree with them. It doesn't mean you cannot simply state something like I just said that perplexes you why would you lift the sheltering in is it because you don't feel like dealing with these protesters are you in some way sympathetic to those protesters what's going on here and our well I'm not going to say it's a rumor so I'm not sure if it's true let me keep moving but you're supposed to 
Pray for your governor, your president. Pray for the police. I heard somebody get on, on TV and say there's no such thing as a good cop, period. Some other people literally had a pig's head in a fire with a cop hat on it, burning it up. No Christian should ever be a part of anything that's disrespectful and hateful. Even if there is a low percentage, very low percentage, you know, I used to work with um, legal, I worked at Juvie and cops would bring in runaways and we'd have to deal with them, with them and, and the people that worked at Juvie, myself, we were detention group workers and in a sense we were like jail guards and in a sense that's pretty close to being a police person and you know what? I was shocked at the level of love and family that every single worker that I worked with for two years had for the delinquents that came in. Many of the delinquents, you think we were their safest, best home because we loved on those kids so much. I don't know what it's like now. I just know what it was like from 66 to 68. And I'm saying, I know there's good policemen. I know there's kind and caring law enforcement people. I know this. And for people to go around like a mantra, uh, messing with police people and not respecting them and talking about defunding them, that's not love, saints. Pray for people. Pray for, just like one of Trump's platforms was, I want to expose corruption. If there is any corruption in the police department, I ain't stupid. I know that there are cops that, that take bribes. I, I'm talking about in our country. I know this is true. Um, because they get busted and it's all over the paper when, they get, when it gets exposed. But I also know, like our Grand Rapids Police Department, for instance, they've been working closely with the inner city pastors group to have good relationships with one another, to understand one another. And that's been going on for quite a few months now. How do you think the, the police people felt when the protesters slash rioters got out of control in downtown Grand Rapids if none of the pastors contacted them and said, we're so sorry, that is so out of order, you've been trying so hard to do right, it shouldn't be in Grand Rapids because our policemen are trying their best to do the right things. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. We need to make sure that as these various crises occur, be it a disagreement over masks or sheltering in, that we never forget about love and discernment and dealing with each situation after knowledge. For instance, if I were a police lady, and you were protesting police in your neighborhood, and you know that for the last 20 years, I've been nothing but kind to everybody in within, because you know the community, within blocks and blocks, and people talk about how nice I am. I'm making this up obvious, but if you know that's true, then if I come in as a police person while people are riding in that neighborhood, there shouldn't be a person in the neighborhood that pretends they don't know me all of a sudden because all these other people are talking about death to cops, pigs, pigs. The people in that general three, four block radius, whatever it is that I was in charge of, they ought to all rally together and say, not her, not him, not him. They've been kind to us. We need to see people after, like this verse says, after knowledge and all judgment, righteous judgment, not paint everybody the same and all divide into our own groups and hate each other, but to love each other and give each other a pass if there's misunderstanding. Another thing, when something happens, I know I'm mixing up the pandemic and the race riots, but they're all going together. They're all flowing together. All the fights about the masks and um, the restrictions and the racial misunderstandings, they're all, they've all become one big storm that doesn't seem to want to let up. And I'm saying, in this storm, Christians need to be a shining light. We need to speak the truth. For instance, just about every incident, the hands up, don't shoot, the 
um, what's the little dude down in St. Louis with the neighborhood dude? Um, Trayvon, that incident. The, um, hmm? Yeah, Florida, Trayvon in Florida. The Mr. Floyd recent incident. The immediate, and there's been more. The immediate response is, oh, how awful, racist, nasty cops. Let's demonstrate. And there's a force among us that is riling all this up. And to stop and say, let's wait. Let's wait and figure out exactly what happened and why. What led up to it? And because people don't know that, and because everybody's worked into such a stormy tether, then when down the road finally uh, the truth comes out and somebody gets off the hook because there's not enough evidence to convict the cop, let's talk about the hands up, don't shoot. That, by the way, never happened. That moment, hands up, don't shoot. You know that, right? Never happened. Made up. They examined that. And it was just obvious through everything, starting with him roughing up a store owner just before he went outside. It was obvious that guy was in the wrong. It became obvious. But what happened immediately? Jump to conclusion. Let's make a big deal of it. And I always did want a 55-inch TV. You get my drift there, right? I just heard, I just read this morning, yesterday people were looting in the Magnificent Mile. Again, something just happened. Nobody's taking the time to examine. If we're Christians, we examine things before we judge. Love has to be with judgment and knowledge. We have to believe all things, hope all things. Innocent before proven guilty, even when it applies to cops or if it happens to be a person that was unjustly dealt with. People, this whole thing we're going through right now, you need to approach it with knowledge. Don't take sides. Don't say it's either black people or white people, Democrats or Republicans. Judge everything with righteous judgment, case by case. Don't be afraid to disagree when you know you're standing on truth. Be bold as a lion in this time. God bless you for listening.